Let's talk about skewness. Let's talk about skew by looking at a couple of examples. If we have a nice bell-shaped curve, right, and it <clears throat> it's very symmetrical, it descends down in both sides, it ends at about the same range, right? So we have a very nice uh, normal symmetric curve distribution. We would say that these data have no skew at all. But if we had a data set that had, maybe even we can say it has the same range, right, from here to here, but instead of being nice and symmetrical, it has a longer tail to the left. Okay, we would say that these data have negative skew. Or that they have a tail that points to the left. And then, of course, the obvious, you could have positive skew as well. Which has a tail that points to the right. So skewness is just a measure of how long these tails are that extend in either direction. Okay, so it's just a measure of how big that tail is. And if we look at the equation, let me show you how that works. The, we usually denote skew as alpha sub 3 because it's the third statistical moment. And it looks like this. We're going to take each observation, subtract from them their mean, and then cube them, sum them up, and divide them by the sample size times the standard deviation cubed. Okay, so let's think for a minute about what that does. If I have this curve again, this normal bell-shaped curve, now let me draw a better curve. We've got to have standards here. All right, if I have this normal, nice bell-shaped curve, and here I have my mean, right, which is my mean from there, and I subtract from it each observation, so let's move out one standard deviation here. And if you remember right, one standard deviation contains 68% of my data. Okay. So if I have a number, if the difference here is less than 1, it essentially, no matter which direction it is, whether it's negative or positive, <clears throat> it becomes increasingly smaller. Right? If I had 0 0.5, and I square that, it becomes a quarter. And if I squared it again, it becomes an eighth, right? So any number that has a standard that is less than one standard deviation away from my mean becomes increasingly smaller. Any value outside of that, so any value in this area here, becomes increasingly larger. So essentially what we're doing in this measure by cubing it, or, or uh, yeah, by cubing it, is we are exaggerating the influence of the outside measures out here and diminishing the value of what's happening in the middle. And because we're cubing it, we keep the sign, right? Negative 2 cubed is negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, then times negative 2 again becomes negative 8. So we're keeping the signs. And so what this becomes when we sum it up <clears throat> is a measure of who has the biggest tails? Which side? The positive tail or the negative tail? So we sum up all of the positive tail, and we sum up all of the negative tail, right? And if this is bigger, in other words, if I have a distribution that looks like this, then when I sum it up, I will end up with a positive value that indicates positive skew, just meaning that my tail is bigger on the positive side than it is on the negative side. And then, of course, the opposite is true, right? If I have negative skew, the weight of my negative skew will be larger than the weight of my positive tail, which will be smaller. And when I sum them all up together, I'll get a very negative value that indicates I have a larger negative tail. Okay. So let's take a look. Uh, just examples again, to, just to reinforce what we're talking about here. Uh, 
right? If I have a distribution that looks like this with no tails, I'm going to have an alpha sub three approximately equal to zero, right? And that would indicate no skew. If I have a distribution that looks like this and I have a tail extending to the right, then my measure of skewness is going to be large and positive, right? And that would indicate positive skew. And the farther I get from zero, the more weight there is in that tail. So a skew of five means that I have a larger positive tail than if I had a skew of two. And then the same thing, of course, is true with a negative distribution, right? I would have an alpha sub three that becomes negative, increasingly negative, which indicates negative skew. And the farther I am from zero, the more skewed that becomes. So skewness is a, is a comparison of the weights of the tails, and it ignores all of the values that are near the mean. All right, let's calculate skew in R. So I'm opening up my window that I'm going to type in. Before that, though, I'm going to come up here to miscellaneous and change working directory. You can do the same thing on a Windows machine by going to file and change working directory. But I have created a file um, that I have used a random number generator to uh, that has different levels of skewness. Sorry, let's go over here to skewness. So the, this is the directory that the variable is saved in. So and to make sure that I've got that right, I can say get working directory and send that over by holding down command and hitting return on a Windows machine on the or on a Mac on a Windows machine. You would hold down control and hit R. But that is the correct file path. So I'm going to open these data. I will just call them the data using the read.csv command, and I know that I named it skewness.csv. So I'll open that up, and we can take a look at the dimensions of the data, and let's take a look at the names of the variables. So I'll highlight that and send all that over. All right, so here I've opened up my data set. I have 250 observations on three variables, and my variables are negative, none, and positive. So this variable has negative skew, this has no skew, and this has positive skew. So the easiest way to calculate this, to calculate skewness, we could create our own function, but inside the E1071 package, there is a, very, a function called skewness skewness and let's say that I was trying to calculate the skewness of the negative variable so I'll send those two over so here I've opened up the library and here I've called the function and in that case I have a negative 0 0.616 for my skewness and we can confirm uh, that we have negative skew there plotting that out, and you can see we have a negative tail, right? Uh, we can also take a look at the positive skew. Uh, it needs an I there, it has to be spelled right. But we have a lot of positive skew there, so I would assume okay, we have a very large number for skewness here, 2.734, so clearly we have a lot of skew there. Um, since I have three variables here, though, the easiest way to have done this would have been to use the lapply function on the data and use the skewness function. So this applies, the lapply function applies to every variable in this data set, this function. So it will calculate the skewness for all three variables simultaneously. And if we zoom out here, we can see that we have slight negative skew negative 0 0.6. We have none, which is very, very close to zero, which is what we anticipate, and our positive skew is very dramatic at 3.7. So that is the easiest way to calculate skewness in R.